welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Please remember, if you like my videos, if you watch the videos, you check them out, you use some information, you like the tips, you like the advice, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I really need your support to keep going forever, to keep growing and continuing to offer you more free information. I really need your support and you can easily do that free just by clicking subscribe. So do that today, would you? Do it, do it. All right, so today I have a really, really exciting video. It's either very exciting or I've had too much coffee. It's one of those two. Yes, exciting, exciting. So what we're gonna look at today is something that people have asked me about a long time and I'm not really sure what kind of tips I have for you. I'm gonna just do my best to share my experience with you with how to register a multicolor job without micro registration. And honestly, nine times out of 10, when I set up my jobs, to tell you the truth, uh, if you take the time to do it carefully from the get-go before you ink up, you know, you don't always have to use the micro registration. But there is one critical key thing or component, I think, that you need in order to be able to register um, multicolor jobs without the micro reg, you know, easily, and it's part of the press. So this is something that I've learned with experience, so I'm going to at least point that out to you. But, but, before I go on, you know what's coming, don't you? Please remember that Catspit Productions sells screen printing, equipment, and supplies. I only sell products that I actually test, products that I would actually use. Okay, so these are all things that I've used, things that I've had experience with, and products that I believe in from companies that I believe in personally. And if you need any help when you're placing your order online, just give me a call Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Arizona time, and you'll get to talk with me. And I'll help you with your purchase online at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. So if you need any screen printing equipment or supplies, please remember you can help me out, help me keep producing videos and keep producing all of the information and stuff on the internet that I do, which I love to do, by the way. Uh, you can help support that by subscribing, right? That's free, of course, you can do that. Or, like I said, if you need some supplies or equipment or anything, let me uh, have an opportunity to help you out. So feel free to give me a call or check out catspitscreenprintsupply.com. So let's see if I can help you with registering your multicolor job on a press that does not have micro reg. And that's oftentimes a bench press, right? All right, so just to review, there are a couple of ways you can set up a multicolor job. You can use the film positives on press, meaning you can line them up on your palette and use them on press, okay? You can use the key printer, your, your printer with the most amount of information that, um, that all the other colors will line up into, so to speak, right? We can use that one as a starting point, and we can line this up on your palette, okay, and tape it down, and we can line up screens on that, okay? Or, as you probably have seen me do in other videos, I, I think I've done both ways, but uh, I also sometimes will take the key printer, the screen, Okay, sometimes I just take the screen, set it up on press, put a, you know, center it, set it up like, like we're going to set up the whole job with this, with this screen, and I print a test shirt on the palette, I flash cure it, okay, and then I line up all the other screens to that test shirt, okay? So there's those two different ways of doing it. But today, basically what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to show you is not so much the actual setup, but what happens when you don't have micro reg or what happens when you put a screen in this clamp and you clamp down these these clamps because that I think is what's happening to a lot of you okay because you know how to line it up on the pallet right but when you go to lock down these clamps it's moving right the screen is moving on you for the demonstrative purposes of this video I'm going to use my film positive as a starting point so I, you know, we're not really setting anything up, so uh, let's say, theoretically, we center this, okay, and I'm going to line the screen up to this. And now, with what we're talking about with the, with the one color or two color multicolor bench presses where you have no micro registration, none of the micro reg back here, okay, 
oftentimes, you know, when you're set, setting your screen up and you clamp it, the screen is moving when you clamp it, right? So that can happen even when you're first setting up, say, we're setting up the key printer like this and we want to line it up to this, this acetate on the pallet. And this is our first screen. So this could happen even for this if we're using this technique, right? Because we're going to get the screen in here a little bit and then I can see the film positive through the mesh openings and I can take a moment and line these up and you know each of you have your own ways of how you might line it up um, you've seen some of my videos before how I do it how I push down and take a look all around and and then we're gonna clamp this okay so now here's where the problem occurs when you know you have um, no micro registration and when you're clamping on particular types of presses not so much this press this Ranar press has the feature that I like and I'll, I'll point that out but basically what I do when I'm going to tighten the clamps believe it or not is I just take my hand and I hold it down here like this and I clamp it okay and, and that's all I do and I do this with all my registrations honestly because like I said before if I take the time to set it up right from the get-go nine times out of ten I don't even have to touch the micro reg okay so um, it all really comes down to your clamp so we're gonna look at that okay so if you find that when you clamp down the clamps the screen is moving it's probably going to move towards the direction of the turn right possibly um, you know, believe it or not, what I've done in the past at shops that I've worked at that had, you know, pretty crappy presses and, you know, you, you lock them in and, and it does this thing as you, as you, as you tighten the clamps, it goes, you know, <laughs> sorry for the sound effect, but the, uh, the screen will actually move a little bit, slightly. Okay, so on those presses, I honestly got used, used, I got used to the press and what I would do is I would offset the, the screen because I knew when I tightened it down, it was going to move like so, okay? So believe it or not, when I didn't have micro reg and the clamp was causing the screen to move, I would actually offset the screen to whatever I'm lining it up to by the amount that I recall from experience that the screen is moving. Okay, that's sketchy, right? But it, it, it's what we, it, it works, okay? Because after a while, as you get used to printing, you're gonna understand um, what's moving and where it's moving. Uh, stencil drag, clamps, all these kinds of things. You're gonna notice those and you're gonna know which way it's moving. And you're gonna kinda know how much too. So believe it or not, that works. And that's probably the only two things that I could tell you is, you know, one is I, I hold the thing down. Maybe if you have a shop where you have somebody working with you, you can have your partner hold the frame while the other guy clamps it. Okay, you could do that. But if you're by yourself, all you can do is do this kind of caper, tighten it down, and hope it doesn't move when you, you know, when you lift it up and check, okay? Or, like I said, if you're very familiar with what's going on, you can actually offset the screen so that when you clamp it and it moves, it's going to move right into registration. Now let's take a look at the print head, the clamp, and let me show you why um, that this Ranar press in particular doesn't have that kind of issue and what kind of presses do have an issue when you clamp down and the screen moves. Let's look at the head, the print head. This is one of the reasons why I like Ranar presses a lot. And the Ranar bench presses that I sell, obviously none of those come with micro registration. But, and, and you can't even, I'm, you know, you can't even really upgrade them to micro reg, you know, because they're bench presses. They're designed differently from a floor press. So what I like, okay, the problem with when you're clamping down, okay, let me try to explain this. The problem is that you'll notice that the screen will move more on presses that do not have a bite clamp, a bite bar. This is, this bar that's here is attached to both of these knobs, both of the clamps, it's attached, 
permanently. I mean, you know, you can replace it, but it's fixed here, okay? And the threaded knob inside moves independently of the bite plate, or whatever we want to call this. Let's call it the bite plate, okay? And so when this screws down onto the screen, the screen frame never actually comes into direct contact with the threaded clamp. So that means there is no object, no clamp that is spinning on the top of your frame edge. Okay, so I don't have a press that does not have a bite plate. So I can't show it to you, but imagine, imagine if you will, in your mind, imagine that there is no bite plate here and all we have are two big washers on the, each end of these cl uh, clamps, okay? <laughs> Can I do movie guy voice? Yeah. All right, so just imagine that for a moment, that this clamp is, or this bite plate is not here. So what you would have is two rotating knobs with those big washers. So when you tighten them, the washer and the knob is spinning, and that's causing the frame to move. It moves in the clamp. Okay, so that's why um, you'll find that presses that do not have a bite plate, when you clamp down the screen, it tends to move a lot. Now, it's possible that it might move a little bit in this type of thing. I, I don't think mine moves at all, really, honestly. I, I like this a lot. This bite plate setup is very cool. And I don't think when I clamp my screens down to register, I don't have any movement, you know, I don't think very much, if at all, okay? So that's why when I set up, quite honestly, guys, I don't use my micro reg a whole lot. Um, I have it because it's convenient and I need it for particular jobs. But uh, when I can set the job up easily by just taking my time and using a nice press that has a bite clamp, okay, or a bite plate, <laughs> okay, then I can pretty much set them up without the micro reg and do pretty well with a little bit of experience and a little bit of time, you know, getting to know the press. Okay, so I think that's the biggest thing that I can point out to you that, that really is going to make a huge difference in lining up multicolor jobs without micro registration is your clamp, your, your clamp, okay, whether it's a rear clamp or a side clamp, if you have a bite plate that's on the knobs, then the screen, the frame, is not going to move as much, if at all, when you tighten the clamps down. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I think experience and skill, you know, uh, time in working with your press is what's going to ultimately help you become familiar with how the press works and what's going on when you set up. Registering a multicolor job on press without the micro-registration is what it is. And I think the best tip overall is when you set up, take your time. Don't rush. Don't ink up those screens until you feel 100% comfortable that you're dead on with your registration. Because once you ink up, you can't see as well and it's a mess. Then, then you can't see the back of the screen has ink on it. When you're trying to register, it becomes much more difficult. So spend the time before you ink up in going around, lifting the heads up, making sure that you are okay. You know what? This is in reg as much as I possibly can get it without doing a test print, okay? Then you do your test print, and at that point, that's when you would use micro reg to, uh, fix whatever problems you might have, or if you don't have micro reg, you may have to release a screen and adjust it. Okay, so that's just the way it is. That's what it is. And, um, you know, the press that you choose to buy, that's why, you know, buying your equipment, it's, it's critical in understanding the process a little bit better. You know, it's important to be educated about the screen printing process before you buy your equipment. That's why I teach so much and I love to teach. So, um, you know, like today we looked at the Ranar print head and I don't mean it to be a selling point for the product, but um, again, you know, the reason why I sell the things that I do is because I believe in them and I won't sell you something that's crap, quite honestly, and I won't sell you something that's not gonna work as well for you as it does for me, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I have a lot more experience, so, I like stuff that works well, sets up easily, is reliable and heavily built, and that's why 
I offer the equipment that I do. So um, that's all, you know, I think that's all I have to say about it. I think I need some more coffee now. All right, so listen, guys, thanks a lot for clicking on my video. I really appreciate your time and attention. Without you, there would be no cat's bed. So thanks a lot. Please remember to subscribe. Leave a comment below if you can. And of course, rate thumbs up. We'll see you next time.